I'm Georgie Courage Cole and welcome to today's Sherlock show. We've plenty in store for you today from fashion to interiors. But first up, I'm joined on the sofa by three ladies from the Sherlock's team, Astrid Carter, Lou Huff and Charlotte Collins. Hi ladies. Hi. You might have noticed we've had a little spruce up in the studio today, all in celebration of our interiors clinic taking place later in the show. I'll be joined by one of London's top interior design duos, Salvis and Graham, and they'll be answering the questions you've sent in this week. Plus, if you're watching live on Instagram, then you'll be able to message us live, and somehow I'm going to juggle that. Uh, if fashion is more your bag, then also today, Lou and Charlotte will be taking you through one of our favourite affordable designer brands, Iris and Ink definitely worth sticking around for. But first, we're talking heels versus trainers. Apparently, heels, sales of heels are on the decline by 11% last year versus trainers, which are on the up 39%. So, is it more about options and less about rejection, or are we rejecting our heels in favour of something more comfortable. Charlotte? I think options is exactly right. It's not that I'm ditching the heels, it's just so nice to be able to wear trainers, you know, more kind of every day and not just kind of keep them for sportiness. However, I do feel like I'm slightly coming back to finding them too casual now. I do, like, you know, five years ago it was this insane revolution where we could suddenly wear trainers places, but I don't know, I, I, I feel like I'm moving slowly back towards heels to feel pulled together these I days. Agree. Yeah. There's always I mean, it's great that you can wear trainers all the time, but it never feels as good when you're in a pair of heels. For me, anyway. Yeah, I'm with you. But the great thing about this kind of like trainer revolution or whatever you want to call it is that you can now wear like the really kind of pretty dresses that you'd always have thought you could wear only wear with heels. Yes. You now, um, yeah, that's you're so definitely true. getting more bang for your mm -hmm. buck yeah. out of your clothes, I think, aren't you? Because you, you're that dress that would you might have worn to a wedding. You yeah. could actually now wear with. Trainers, so true. Exactly. And I don't think it's like a really an either or. As you said, it's about just having options and like equally wearing a dress with trainers. I also would love wearing just like a t-shirt, jeans, and a pair of heels mm. to make something I that's love super that casual just feel a little bit more dressed up. Yes. Yeah, so I love true. I love that look of like a pair of jeans, a cashmere jumper, and some heels, yeah. or the pretty dress and the trainers. And actually, if you're going to the pub for like a casual dinner or something. Mm. Both of those would be really appropriate, wouldn't yeah, they? Yeah. yeah. But in a way, do you not find it's gone a bit too far? Like, it upsets me a bit if I go somewhere smart now or somewhere where you've made a real effort, the theatre, that kind of thing. And people really are just in trainers. And that's fine, you know, each their own. It's great to be comfortable. But I feel like it's a shame that there's not really a limit anymore. Mm, I I'm, agree, yeah. I mean, the theatre is... I think back to when people really used yeah. to. I used my mum when so I was little nice. used to really dress me up but to I go to the think theater. That's I would trainers. definitely dress up to yeah. go to the yeah, theater. Yeah, but people just don't anymore. Well, yeah. I think it is. I think it's because like active wear has become so much more mainstream. But I think everyone just generally is so much more casual. It's like it is really upsetting. Like it's nice to get really yeah. dressed up to go somewhere. Yeah. But yeah, I think it's about it's about having both, and and it's great that a lot of designers are also coveting trainers. So it's not like mm. just off the high street. You've got just your Adidas mm. and your Nike. There are so many more. Like Isabel Morant, that trainer is everywhere. Mm. Well, they're the ones who've really actually thrust it into yeah. the mainstream. Yeah. Anyway, there's nothing like, if you ask me, Friday night, you've got to be in your heels, you've got to have a new top on, there's nothing like a pair of heels to feel like you're going yeah. out. I don't want to dance in flats either. No, no. Just if can't I, get in the mood. Yeah, or yeah, if I've ever been somewhere I've ended up dancing, I actually want to take my flats off and yeah. just dance yeah. on my toes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, there's another report that we saw today, this time it was by Avon, that said that the average woman takes 11 minutes to put her makeup on. Now, I think I am the average woman. I think I probably am, not quite 10, uh, just over 10, I'm probably about 11. How long do you all take to put your makeup on? Someone in the Sherlock's like, office confessed that it took her half an hour in the morning. I was like, you definitely don't have children. <laughs> <laughs> I've got she a school to do. She care though, let's uh, give her that. She does. <laughs> uh, Charlotte, how long do you take? I, th I, I meant to time it this morning. I think I'm about eight and my makeup routine doesn't really vary. I might just like change up my eye a bit, but I tend to go pretty full coverage every day and the same really for a night out. So I'm like a solid eight. No, say. I'm like five. I mean, I'd love to know how to spend more time on my makeup so <laughs> if someone wants to teach me great but yeah um i don't really use that so you much. think it's lack of knowledge that makes it only take you five well, minutes well i don't have that many products i've got a few things and i don't do much eye makeup and i imagine that is what takes a bit more time yeah um, i'm thinking that i don't take enough time now because i wear quite a, i always have a smoky eye but i just kind of shove it on but isn't think, that isn't that a secret of a smoky eye just shoving it on <laughs> i'm gonna go with that if i um, shoved it on i would look terrible so i don't think yeah astrid good. you are you're good at that look yeah, yeah, I yeah. Think yeah. We, all, like, we all need a little uh, how-to from astrid yeah. how long do you take 
do you I'd think? say five, six minutes. But then do if I'm you? really like going to a wedding or going to, on a night out, I'll take half an hour and it's all about the base. Really I think practicing that's practice, that base. isn't yeah. it? I think it was Zadie Smith who said to her daughter, I remember listening to a podcast, she said to her daughter, if your, ma your makeup is, you're not allowed a makeup routine that takes you more than, was it 10 minutes, yeah. was it 50? She said, you know, there are these girls growing up spending hours and hours contouring and that's not healthy. I thought yes. that was quite good. Uh, the same report also said that the most expensive item in a woman's beauty bag is her foundation. Not all that surprising, maybe, but I thought it would be interesting uh, to find out what the most expensive and least expensive item is everyone has. Charlotte, let's start with you. Okay, so yes, I do spend the most on my foundation. I wear um, Estee Lauder Double Wear Light, wearing it today, um, and I just find it has the best coverage for sure. But then my cheap, my, I actually have quite a high-low mix, I'd say, in my in my bag. Um, my cheapest is a um, eyeliner, and it's like four pounds, five pounds, really cheap. I definitely see why you need to spend lots of money on liquid eyeliner. No. Perhaps not surprising. Lou, yours? So, my most expensive is Chanel Inimitable Intense Mascara. I, I'm a real creature of habit and I've used this for like 10 years, I would say. And What's expensive? Really How much does that cost? It's £27. That is a lot of mascara. Quite a lot. A couple of months, but I, do, I, do I really like yeah, the brush. Do. So Let's see the brush. That is a nice I, it's oh, kind like of like brush. yeah, it's kind of like that fiber, but yeah, I just I love it. I love okay, it. Okay, and your cheapest? Um, and my cheapest is Blistex Med Plus lip balm. I once discovered this in New York years ago, and I thought it only came from there, so I used to stock up every time I went, <laughs> and then I came back and I saw it in Boots, <laughs> and it really it really ruined the dream. <laughs> but it's amazing. It's got like a little bit of a tingle, um, and it doesn't have that like glossy finish, so it just sort of plumps I guess and makes them feel quite fresh mm. so yeah and I think that's like £2.50 and I think you know you don't have many items so you know we'll allow you your exactly. £28 <laughs> mascara Thank Astrid you. what about you mine are of the same ilk so I've got this really cheapy um, Lottie London strobe stick which is just great for whacking on to do a bit of highlighting have a look it's kind of foolproof you just pop it on your cheekbones a little bit on the end of the nose above oh, the lip nice nice and where's it's that from from Superdrug. Okay. So I got sent this ages ago and I didn't realise how cheap powdery, it was. I've been it? using it for ages and then I looked it up and it's literally like 4 99 Amazing. Nice. That's, so that's, that's great. That, yeah, that doesn't happen to me very often. No. <laughs> <laughs> On the other end of the spectrum, everyone loves a bit of Charlotte Tilbury and this kind of does the same. I actually, I've used it so much I've lost the lid. Um, this I love is, it. You can tell this is, genuine. This is genuine. This one's it's like really almost done. Out as well. um, so this these is, are contour sticks. These are the contour sticks. So oh. this one is to highlight and this one is to contour. Um, but they're great. And color. your makeup always looks great. Yeah, you're so good at makeup. I feel like the recurring thing that might be the expensive thing in people's makeup bags is Charlotte Tilbury. Charlotte yeah. Tilbury, Tom Ford, true, they're yeah. the like, expensive brands. Well, mine are um, Hocus Focus. So my cheapie is Hocus Focus, which Amanda Harrington, the amazing makeup artist, recommended. She said, put it, mix it with your foundation. It's an illuminator and it just gives you a little glow. Anyway, you can see how filthy dirty this is <laughs> and how well used it is but this is like her big big tip and how much is that one i think it's like six mm, six quid I don't know. I don't know. she yeah. raves about it she talked about it again at our wellness day on sunday and Amazing. yep she was like winner and then my most expensive oh uh, i was disappointed that my most expensive was 45 quid i thought i was a bit more high maintenance than that <laughs> <laughs> i think it's like that's pretty, pretty expensive, expensive. <laughs> No, I'm joking, I'm going to get in trouble for that. But um, the Rodial, Rodial Foundation, I've really got into, and again, Amanda raves about their makeup. Mm. Um, so this is the Skin Tint, I've lost the lid, just like you. <laughs> the Skin Tint Foundation, really good. It's quite matte, so mixed with a bit of that. Um, and Hourglasses, what's it actually called? It's just a bronzer, um, but it's like... Oh, I love the look of it. Yeah, yeah. I love the marbled yeah. bronzer. Yeah. 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 I really love that. So I have w one bronzer, and then this one's got a bit of shimmer. So, mm. yeah, those are mine. Uh, <coughs> right, we're going to move on on a product. Well, yours isn't a product, it's actually. A product, we're going to move on onto the one thing that we're all loving this week. Charlotte, yours is not a product. No, it it's is. not. I, I have become obsessed with Safe on Netflix. It's a new British series. It's like a cross between, do you remember The Missing on BBC <gasps> last year? The Amazing. Missing. Um, and The Sinner on Netflix, the one with Jessica Biel that we were also Ooh, all obsessed with. It? So it's with Michael C. Hall, who is the star of Dexter, which I've never actually watched, but I want no. to now. Um, and it's basically an eight-part series. It's about his daughter's gone missing, his wife's recently died of cancer. There's a whole, um, you know, big kind of village mystery drama, people are dying, 
who's responsible Ooh. set up. It is really and good. set in modern day. Set in modern day. Okay. Set in like like a gated community in Surrey or something. Um, he's a doctor. It's all very. It's actually quite BBC, but it's on Netflix. I mean, high addictive. Yeah, and that sounds yeah, really safe, good. safe on Netflix now. I, I've been hearing a few people chatting about so it in good. the office this week. I need to get. Yes. I need to get involved with that. Also, a bit of love for the dress I'm wearing today. Yes. I know it's mine. I'm going to give my own dress some love. But this is a brand called Sleeper that Lou and I discovered a few months yeah. back. Great. Um, it's actually a Ukrainian brand, but you can shop it. There's, I can confirm there's no customs fees because I was really nervous. You did but, but they just arrived. <laughs> I waited you quite a while. I, waited, I did wait a while because each one is custom made. Um, but they're just these really beautiful linen night love dress it. dresses. It's stunning. I love it. I wore it unbuttoned the other day with some jeans as well. So really versatile. Really nice. Thank and you. actually got a bit of love for your dress, Astrid. Yes. Which so is nice. um, Topshop. No, Zara. 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 It's like 29 yeah. Love Zara. it. Absolutely so beautiful. gorgeous. It. You're rocking the linen dress, ladies. <laughs> Which brings me neatly on to Lou, because I believe your item. Yes. Do also. we have an assistant? With, uh, <laughs> thank you, Maya. We're also feeling the linen. It's rather love. a lot here. <laughs> yes, it's, totally like, it's like your laundry, Lou. Yeah. So my laundry <laughs> this week. <laughs> no. So um, this is my new linen pajamas. They're from a brand called Piglet in Bed. Can I just say they are so you? You hold them <laughs> up. Like those. Are, I could have spotted that they were your pajamas. I you? literally love them. So, nice. so it comes. Them. Yeah. Oh, they're lovely. Really nice. So nice. Real um, linen. And so they nice. come with a, I've got the trousers that match and it also comes with a short, but it's actually, I've been wearing it now, it's a little bit hotter, just like this, like as a night dress, basically. And oh, I just love linen nightwear. Yeah, I think it's, it's just really so nice. nice. It's really nice. Um, and they also do some really beautiful bedding. I won't get it all out because we haven't really got <laughs> space, but this is um, their blush range and that's the pillowcase. That colour's gorgeous. I love so linen nice. bedding. Yeah. I think it is just <coughs> the most, it just feels like such a treat. Mm. So it really like yeah. on the Amalfi Coast or something and getting you're, a uh, like, you're right it's like a holiday yeah. treat mm -hmm. so yeah I really highly recommend their brand they've got some amazing pieces and what I thought was really clever about that brand was that you can buy the linen in a bundle yeah. so for an amount you get two pillowcases oh, a duvet so cover clever. and a sheet, a sheet yeah, exactly. and it goes together yeah. that's really clever and you can buy a double bundle yeah. which is a bit more cost effective yeah. so I amazing. love that and it's like white blush pink and I think there's a stripe as well so check it out really really worth Piglet it Piglet and bed Piglet in bed. Love the name. Such a cute name. You're not yeah. allowed to get that, are you? Astrid, what's your product? Well, not a product, but on Tuesday evening I went to see the Rolling Stones. Oh, yes. Which was so absolutely jealous. Absolutely amazing. I was mean, it? once in a lifetime. I'd never seen them before. Um, I was going to say, kind of getting it in before they all peter out, but <laughs> I think by their performance on Tuesday night they've still got a good few years in them. They just don't age, they do they? I mean, it's remarkable. And where their energy comes from, yeah. I saw yeah. some. I saw some. Um, video of it. it just, I mean, yeah. I was very envious yeah. of you going off the The atmosphere must have been incredible. Yeah, it was so much fun. Like when they really kicked in, everyone was just having such a great time. Seeing somebody Nothing. vintage like that is actually yeah. the atmosphere is way better than yeah. Yeah, yeah, you, you can't, can't, like, you can't beat it. Yeah. Bad, um, Rolling Stones like vintage t-shirts oh, yeah, going imagine. on there. I'm sure. Yeah, that was I'm a lot sure. Of those. Uh, and your product of <laughs> my the week product is slightly less rock and roll. But um, I am obsessed with this. So Lou, you'll love this one. I can't wait. <laughs> Me and Lou are like forever on the search for anti-frizz yeah. hair I products. This is Color Wow's Dream Coat. It's basically like um, a Brazilian blow dry at home. <gasps> so you spray it on wet hair, then you pull your hair taut and blow dry it. And it just takes away all the frizz, all the kind of um, rainy day humidity. It was developed by a woman who was part of the development of, do you remember Frizzies? The yeah. Race? Which literally do saw I me through yeah. like Frizzy, that Frizzy that teenage me years. Yeah. Frizzies must be still around. It's was still that around, the but serum that yeah. we used on yeah, like put so yeah. much serum yeah. on our hair that we had washed that. it for a month. Like, like ponytail. I know now like hair care has come on leaps and bounds, but back then Frizzies was yeah. like, Oh my god, it was revolutionary. Yeah. It really was, yeah. It really saw me through my frizzy teenage teenage years. So this I would really recommend to anyone that has frizzy hair. It's amazing. Tip. Thanks. Well, mine is this joie blouse, uh, which we ran on the site yesterday, which comes from Trilogy, who are a great multi-brand boutique. They sell great denim, and they sell so many amazing blouses. Rixo, Equipment, joie, Tucker. I mean, there is, you know, their blouse, you know, wardrobe yeah. is, is 
quite impressive. So yeah, I'm thrilled with this. It looks so and amazing. Nice. Yeah, you might get very bored of seeing it. The <laughs> thing I'm not loving this week, just before we finish this segment, is the fact that I've given up Diet Coke. I'm on day four, and it's <laughs> miserable when it's your only source of caffeine. But you have done really well. Yeah, yeah, you I'm, have. Actually, I'm actually really surprised that you've made it. Well done. God, I really I've really only made it because I've committed to it. <laughs> you know, in public. Well, Otherwise, you have, I would have quit. You rich. I've got, got a, I've got yeah. a can of it sitting <laughs> on my desk. Apparently, that's what alcoholics do, and <laughs> it's taunting me. Anyway. And after this week, do you think you're going to go back back on as you were? Yeah. Oh. yeah. I'm not. Oh, I'm going to. I'm, I'm going to aim to go down to two okay. uh, okay. and not three. Uh, I, I don't drink coffee, so you know, I, I'm falling asleep at my desk. You know, <laughs> I need something to keep me awake. Anyway, on that note, uh, I think we'll leave it there. Don't go away, however, because Lou and Charlotte will be back after this short break, talking you through the new Iris and Ink collection. talk about building capsule wardrobes pretty frequently here at Sherlock's and if there's one designer brand doing it for a relatively affordable price it's Iris and Ink. Launched by the Outnet back in 2012 it's the collection of real staples that we always love. So we're going to have a quick look at some of their new pieces for spring summer. So let's start by looking at this gorgeous blue dress and I think it's really important to remember that staples and wardrobe, a capsule wardrobe doesn't have to mean no colour. No, definitely. Uh, but I mean, this isn't the brightest colour. I think this no. is going to suit like a lot of skin tones. Wrap dresses aren't going anywhere. They're sort of a wardrobe favourite. And this colour is just divine. So true. So, so pretty. And this is, you know, it's a wrap dress, but it comes up pretty high. So no yeah. worries about bursting out of it. And it's pretty long as well. So good event dress, actually. Oh, definitely. Perfect for all the sort of occasions, weddings, races, anything like that. Totally. Got this summer. So it's great races. one to have. So true. Such a good one. Next up, we have this gorgeous <gasps> slip dress. Wow, this is so beautiful. It isn't feels it? amazing, right? Like, it's this really lovely pale pink colour. This is going to suit a lot of skin yeah. tones. And it's so versatile. You'll see it on screen with a leather jacket, with some flats, so wearable, but also a pair of heels on holiday, big earrings. Ideal. And also like a denim jacket and trainers, like your cost per wear I think is going to be incredible. Like, And this just looks so, so expensive. Yes, it does. It's just stunning and you've got like a, almost like a double strap yeah, detail, so, so nice. really elegant, really feminine. This is just so beautiful. And Iris and Ink is so good at basics that have a bit of a trend-led twist. Yeah. This is something that is really current, but also you're going to wear it for a long time Yeah, to and God, if anyone's going to know how to sort of build the perfect capsule wardrobe that is also trend-led, it's going to be the outlet. Like, they know yes. what sells, don't they? So true. They've got plenty of experience. Next up, let's look at this amazing leather jacket. This is obviously a bit more of an investment piece, but it feels amazing. Yeah. Real soft butter leather. And it's got the nice dark hardware, which makes yeah. a real difference in making something look a bit more expensive. And I think if there is one thing to invest in in your wardrobe, it, it really is leather. Like yeah. this isn't going to date. It's the kind of the classic biker shape. So as I said, you could wear this with anything. Um, as Charlotte said, we've seen it over a slip dress. You could pretty much wear that with every single style that we've got here. Yeah. And it's just not going to go into a new wardrobe. No. And it feels amazing. Amazing, so good. And as you say, we live in England, so you're always, you always gonna need, need a layer. You always need a layer. Next up, let's look at this jumpsuit, a little bit more trend led than your conventional yeah. capsule wardrobe piece, but we've seen a lot of really expensive versions of this kind of thing. So nice to be able to get it at a slightly more reasonable price. It's real linen, it feels so good, and such a nice lightweight piece for holiday. Yeah, and I love that little frill detailing along the front. You've got a slightly wider leg, which is super flattering on your ankles. Yes. It's always going to look gorgeous, but such an easy throw on with a pair of slides on the beach. Mm. Amazing. Yes, and it crops in exactly the right place, actually, even on my short leg. 
legs. <laughs> Next up, we have this cardigan. We've been obsessed with this for a while, actually. We shot yeah. it as a buy of the day a few months ago. It's really nice and light for summer, so another really good layering piece. Yeah, and I think this one also comes in a jumper, so if a cardigan's not for you, then you've got the jumper style, but I actually think a cardigan is a way more versatile knit to have for summer, because mm. you can just pop it over something, you're not going to ruin the outfit you've got underneath, so yes. you can still see everything. And again, there are some really expensive versions of this around, yeah. aren't there? So nice to have a slightly more affordable option. Next up, we have these linen trainers. Uh, oh, they're not trainers, <laughs> they're trousers. <laughs> not trainers at all. But so, so lovely for holiday. A really, really easy piece if you're just a bit done with dresses and you want to yeah. move on to separates. I mean, as you can hear from everything we've said today, it's all about linen for summer, isn't it? And they're just such a versatile pair. Like, they've got, a, I don't know if you can see on camera, a little soft, um, almost like a tan dart mm. running through that, which is really lovely. Yeah. Super easy. Just, you know, you can't go wrong with a pair of trousers like that. So true. So nice with just like a plain white tee. Yeah. Really, really wearable. Nice with head to toe yeah. neutrals, actually. Next up, we have this skirt. I actually tried this on yesterday and bought it. It's arriving today. That's how amazing I think it is. It's so glamorous, but also so versatile. Yeah. We shot it with a jumper and some flats. So wearable for every day, but also really great for a night oh, out. God, I absolutely love this. This is just, it's so elegant. The length of it, I think it charms just above the ankle. Mm -hmm. Again, it's just so, so flattering. Yes. You can dress this up or down in so many ways. You've got a little grow grain ribbon inside and a zip detail at the side, mm -hmm. rather than it be um, elasticated. I think it's a little bit more flattering. It's a bit so more feminine. True. And I've been looking for something like this on the high street for so long. And whilst the high street is amazing, it's hard to get the same quality. This yeah. feels really substantial and it's, hundred pounds which is pretty good I'd say yeah. for something that wearable and also you can wear that totally through into winter that's not right yes sort of just spring so summer true. only so I think you've got a lot of wear in that outfit. so true finally we've got this amazing dress I think this is pretty in keeping with what me and Astrid are wearing today <laughs> this it's really lovely off the shoulder this is very much a holiday piece, yeah. but you're going to get a lot of wear out of this this season. Yeah, and we've seen the Bardo trend everywhere this season, a lot of off-the-shoulder tops, so why not rock it in a dress style as you guys are today? Button detailing down the front, and actually the flap goes over the button detail, mm. which I think is really nice. Uh, you could sort of unbutton that a bit higher and just wear it over swimwear. I just think this is so versatile. So I want to slit at the side, actually. So oh, yeah, yeah perfect. Really, really and again, perfect. another one, gold sandals, big earrings, yeah. dress it up for evening. I mean, so just everything well. here, it's a, it's a real, like, mini capsule. Totally. Look. For summer, everything that you need, I think, for so many different styles, you could mix and match all of that, wear it all mm -hmm. together. So And they've yeah. got great swimwear, great shoes, yeah. so check them out. Everything we've looked at here is going to be available below and also is online at the outlet now. Georgie's going to be right here with a top interior of Graham. Incredible. Oh my god, Lou, I just love oh, that. Yes. That is so cute with your boots and your jeans. So cute. Oh, I like <gasps> well, oh, wow. That's great. Pretty cool, right? That's amazing. That is amazing. You should buy that. My modeling took me up to New York and discovered a whole fabulous world. That was such fun because Madison Avenue in those days was just hopping. I was young and I didn't really have an ambitious bone in my body. I was completely living the moment. Soaking up New York, the nightlife, incredible. Area, Studio 54, it's so exciting. Work all day, go party out and party all night. Yes, yes. out the door, already Hi. filming. Which way are we going? Through here. Welcome to Shillup. This is one couple where the wife had had breast cancer and she had stopped undressing in front of her husband for the last two years. They yeah. would each be naked and say what they loved about that person's body. He went to her scars immediately and said, I love your scars because I know what you went through and you survived. And it Known for their love of colour, print and texture, I am thrilled to introduce one of my favourite interior design teams, Nicole Salverson Hi. and Mary Graham. Hi. Welcome, ladies. Thank you so Thanks much for, for joining us. us. <laughs> and can I just say, how incredible does our set look? It's been given the Salverson Graham magic touch. Yeah. It looks Mini great. Makeover. Mini makeover. Love it. <laughs> Love it. Um, anyway, I am so excited that you're here for today's interior design clinic. For people watching that don't know your style, how would you summarize it? Well, it's sort of, um, I suppose we like, we do like quite a traditional interior, but definitely with a modern twist. Lots yeah, kind of, of youthful color. injection. Yeah, absolutely. Colour and color pattern, pattern and texture. Those are our big watchwords. Yeah. Okay, well, let's get started. I'm going to endeavour 
to do this live and look at some questions that are <laughs> going to come in at the same time. Let's start off with someone who said they bought a new home and what should they save on? What can they save on? What should they spend on? Yeah. So it's something we get asked a lot because obviously um, when you've just bought a new home, you've um, overstretched yourself and you want to do the best mm. things you can. And um, interiors is actually the place which often gets left to the last mm, bit as well. Absolutely. So um, a huge part of the budget is often spent on curtains. So you know, go through your house, work out where you really need. You know, bedrooms obviously you're going to need curtains for blackouts. Mm. Can you do blinds in in the, in the bedroom? Yeah, yeah. they're not so good for blackouts. So a lot of clients are a bit obsessed with a good night's sleep. So curtains with a pelmet mm. are much better for that. Yeah. But downstairs you often don't need anything on the windows. Actually, if you've got quite elegant windows with a nice frame, you don't mm. need anything. You can paint a frame. Yeah, of painting having... a frame is a good kind of oh, cheap okay. alternative mm. to a curtain. And what, um, what else can you save on? Um, so saving on, I mean, one of the things we'd spend on is builders, you know, if okay. you, if you yeah. need to get building work done. And actually, just generally, if you're doing any work to your house, really focus on the bones. Mm. I mean, it's, We'd say, yeah, yeah don't, don't scrimp on tradesmen in general because mm. you'll end up paying for it later. Mm. But things like bathrooms, you can get quite good sanitary wear yeah. quite cheaply, but taps you should spend on because they'll break if you don't. Mm. Okay, um, like So it. there's in rooms, there's always a balance between where you can do some kind of clever, cheap things and where you really need to spend okay. on quality. Mm. Okay, what are the main interior design trends right now? Right now. Um, big so question. Big yeah. question. <laughs> um, colour, pattern, you know, it's, it is really big right now. People are really turning more towards that. Yeah. Um, and then little details, you know, we've got scallops and um, we've just brought out our, our new rug um, range. So this is your is own rug yeah. range? Our own rug, yeah. The I it with Jennifer Manners. And um, it's a, so this is a really simple idea of a, a rug with a, um, a double border, but we've just taken it that little bit further and done a decorative edge yeah, on it. Yeah, it's clever. Mm. Um, and that's really coming through, you know, fashion, um, scallops all over fashion at the moment as well. And then things like, you know, we've put these cushions in here, they've got the frill edge. Yeah, we love a frill. We Mary's love You guys today. love a frill. Everyone loves love a frill. A frill. <laughs> okay, um, what other trends? Um, craft as well, like handmade things, British made things is a really mm. um, kind of, focus of our clients at the moment they often want to know the provenance of things and that they've been made by craftspeople mm. um, so things like ceramics like this we like to dress a room with um, a lot of sort of handmade objects so just okay. give it that more um, unique feel and less kind of high street or less yeah. mainstream it makes yeah. it feel more lived in and that it's yeah. personal yes and actually yeah. that's something I'd say about your style it does feel homely and lived in yeah. it doesn't feel like you've got Definitely. to just be really neat and well behaved all the time yeah, yeah absolutely and, and what trends would you avoid um, trends yeah <laughs> we, we trends generally say <laughs> avoid trends I mean okay. go with what you like you know things like that but don't don't go too far on the trends mm. because okay. this is something you're going to live forever yeah. fair, fair. Um, someone said I want to be bold but how many basic colours can I use in a room at once yeah. Really, <laughs> as many as you like. It's about yeah. sort of balance. Yeah, and, and confidence in doing it. And it, mm. it's there's so many similarities to fashion. Actually, we were thinking when we were prepping for this talk, if you do it with confidence, you can pull it off. Mm. But if you're kind of tentative and you think, oh, I'm just going to do a feature wall and or just one pink chair and see how it goes, mm. it just doesn't really work. So just go for it be bold but be confident with it and really mix a lot of things in almost the more you mix in the better yeah. it looks and actually yeah if you you can't really see so the cushions yeah, are behind you but actually yeah you do i always think of you and i think oh yeah. well, that works and i think and I don't think doubt yourself because if you stop halfway and don't commit it's not going to work yeah. so you've got to kind of see it through okay yeah. how do you choose the right paint color it's i mean it's <laughs> It's difficult. Um, choosing the right paint colour is um, going to depend on the light, the size of the room, the, you know, the mm. type of property it is. But we yeah. really think don't fixate on it. A lot of people come to mm. us and that's one of their early questions. They just say, what colour should I paint this mm. room? And you think, well, you've got to think about the room as a whole. Are you going to have bright coloured art on the walls? Are you going to have loads of fun cushions? You know, there's other stuff in a room that brings interest, not just the walls. Yes. So we always say, don't decide that at the beginning get a kind of theme going for your room, maybe via Pinterest or something like that, work out the colours and patterns that are coming through and then think about your paint so colour. You might have a concept of what the colour is going to be on a wall when we're talking about a particular room with a client, but actually we actually probably won't pinpoint that exact paint colour until right at the mm. end. Okay, um, so mm. you can have a vega that you want a blue. Yeah, blue exactly, but not the exact blue. Yes, mm. you can spend hours and hours and hours. Yeah, and honestly, like a hundred swatch, you know, samples on the it. wall and it's so paint depressing. <laughs> what are your favourite paint colours right now? Um, I think we both have green. Yeah, we've painted our um, shop green. Green's green. a big trend yeah. though. Yeah, yeah definitely. definitely. I think people have gone from blue now, they're into green yeah. actually, so we probably have been on green for a bit longer than, you know, than... You were ahead 
yeah, Phil Tesco. Yeah, Phil Tesco. Of course you were. Of course you were. So green, and is it safe? I mean, I'm, I'd be worried that green is... Green is actually quite tricky because yeah. there are lots of different tones of it. It can be a bit sickly. Yeah. But um, it's, you know, you, again, I if think, you can be brave and choose quite yeah, strong Yeah, and green. if you're not sure, great for a downstairs loo or um, mm. you've actually got it in your utility room, which is yeah. really fun, like a dark gloss green. So, yeah. you know, if you're not sure, I'd say don't do it in your, you know, master bedroom or one yeah. of the big rooms in your house. Maybe try being a bit braver somewhere mm. smaller first. Okay, yeah. good advice. Um, someone said, what's your favourite neutral paint colour? Or, or your favourite grey? Uh, well, we, we don't love a neutral. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but if you had, I want to know what a neutral um, is. Shaded white. Shaded white is amazing. Okay. Because actually it appears... And, and it's we, quite green. It has know, a bit of green in it, though. I so think that this whole sort of Sophie. move to colour yeah. everyone thinks, oh, you know, none of us like neutrals anymore. We do like neutrals. And actually mm. you can use neutrals. They look completely different depending on the light. They might actually look quite dark. Yes. But, mm. you know, so it's, it's not... You okay. can use nice neutrals. What colours work really well on front doors? Well, um, personal taste, but yeah. we think blues we and like greens. We like blues and greens. Really classic colours. Yeah. Go classic on your front door. Mm. But then actually we're also thinking about the how lots of, um, you know, you get all the bloggers standing in front of like, an mm. amazing pink door. Pink door, door something like yeah. That. yeah. Um, so, you I know, think and it's I, somewhere and where you can have fun yeah. as well. It's again, it's a bit like the downstairs loo. You know, you can have fun, but you will yeah. see it every day. So yeah. um, you've got to make sure that you like but it. But maybe not highlighted green or something like that. You know, yeah. stay away no, from no, those. No, no. It's like yeah. a classic And our paint brands, everyone talks about mixing paints. Yeah. Is it worth buying Farron Ball paper paint library or can you yeah. can you have them copied? Again, this is something we, we talk get, about yeah. a lot. I mean I think you, you can. The the main the big paint companies, they really take a long time, don't they? Considering all their colours and they yeah. are the colours are more complex from the bigger mm. Um, paint brands um, and the finishes are different as well like Farron Ball has quite a kind of chalky finish which is why people mm. like it and if you mix that in Dulux or whoever you're not going to get the same finish and the colour won't be a perfect match so mm. I think if you want to do That's that what I worry about what you've if got you have to get a sample done and check yeah. and you can't buy sample pots tiny ones when you're testing you need to buy one like that mm. um, we tend to say in the principal rooms use the real thing and then maybe further up the house if it's for a Money saving reason, use a mix. Okay, but if you have point. tested it with um, the actual paint brand's colour and then you think you're going to get the same, you'll react totally differently to a cut. Yeah, so the pigments are so minute, the differences, um, but they have a massive so it difference in the light. Has grey had its day? Yes, <laughs> for us. For us. I still love it. No, but actually, again, it's this whole sort of neutral. There's nothing, it's that, that whole, I've, you know, probably a room entirely in grey. Yes, but actually mixing it in with, pinks and it in with different colours and, and bringing yeah. a little bit more interest in it. And again, there's no wonderful. right or wrong with interiors. No, totally. You know, we like colour, but plenty of other people like neutrals. So yes. it's fine. But again, just do it with confidence if you're going to do it. Mm. Okay. Someone said, "Would you still buy?" This is quite specific. She was she's about to order elephant grey velvet sofas. <laughs> I have elephant grey <laughs> velvet sofas from sofa.com. Yeah, a dark grey, and I freaking love. Them. I feel like we're the worst people to be talking to and you about. But that. would you? No, 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 I can take it. Um, I'm not doing trends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm with grey. Would you um, still advise someone buys elephant grey? Yeah, it's if as if you're going to be putting cushions on it and other things. Mm. It's not you're not necessarily going to have an elephant grey room. Yeah. But yeah, it's totally. Okay. It's the yeah. neutral. It's it's something and it's to the ground way your you room. Dress it. And I think a sofa is. Uh, piece that's going to last you for a long time mm. so buy something you like but dress mm. you know be a okay. bit more adventurous yeah. with the way you dress it maybe um any rules for mixing prints and patterns together not really i mean one of the things that we probably tend to do is we might choose lots of different um patterns and um and colors and then we will probably have one particular fabric or um a wallpaper that yeah. really grounds it so it'll have lots of different colors mm. going through it so something almost together. like the fabric of your dress or this yeah, cushion exactly. that might go on a footstool in the middle of the room and then you'll work out from that so you mm. might think I have some mustard velvet cushions because that would look really nice. Maybe I'll have a blue and beige check because that will go. Mm. So kind of get one piece to start you off and then work out yeah. from that. Or the other way, if you ever think everything's clashing a little bit, so I want to tie it together, just find something that has a lots mm. of the different colours of the room. And, and again, and it's confidence. Way. It's just like mm. do it with conviction. Okay. Mm. Any um, inexpensive tips for updating a kitchen? Yes. Paint the doors. Paint the doors. Yeah, yep. although, although not inexpensive, I'd say yeah, if quite, you've got a big kitchen. Okay. And also, there's lots of elements of the, the, the prep you don't think about. You can't just paint the doors. You have to okay, paint the so sides. Okay, so don't rush into painting yeah. the door. Yeah. It might go wrong. But <laughs> handles and it's more complicated. Is handles are really good. Handles. Yeah. New yeah. splashbacks. I um, splashbacks. yeah, which is really easy. I mean, I've got brass splashbacks, which are just sort of metal sheets, and, and they're so, so cheap, inexpensive. They okay, someone someone on Instagram saying sofa.com or loaf for sofas. Actually, it's comfort. I'd say loaf is much more slouchy. 
Yeah. Safer.com Safer. Safer. is much oh, more set up. So it depends what you want. If you want to like veg out, yeah, no. no. If you want something a bit more, yeah, upright. Okay, yeah. Um, inexpensive tips for updating a bathroom. You start with it unless you change all your... Uh, bathrooms are probably harder than yeah. kitchens, but um, paint it a really fab colour. Yeah. Get some artwork on the walls that you wouldn't expect in a bathroom. Yeah. And that so was actually the print. same. Yeah, exactly. um, we had that tip for kitchens as well, actually. Mm. Like, Treat them as a room, not just a kitchen or a bathroom. They're not a room in your house, so they yeah. need nice pictures. You can put wallpaper in a bathroom. People are really scared about that. Mm. Yeah, but as I've long got as you've got ventilation, it's yeah. totally fine. Don't use such. I think they're quite utilitarian rooms. You know, use mm. something that's not. So bring Make in a them more fun, decorative. really coloured mirror. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And also, if you have got some really gross tiles with horrible grout, actually just replace it. You know, mm. just do that one thing and pay and get that done, and mm. it will feel so fresh. What replace the grout? Or replace the, the tiles because it's not expensive. And if you choose bigger tiles that's cheaper than doing really small ones mm. and there are so many amazing printed tiles now where do you yeah, go totally. for tiles that aren't too expensive um i mean if you want just endless i always think walls and floors are quite a good option yeah. for some and even really top tiles they're tiles. boutique mm. they have different yeah. boutique ones mm. which actually have really nice stuff yeah, yeah and quite do. a lot of mm -hmm. stuff that looks quite hand done they can get quite expensive some mm. of them so you've just got to be realistic and actually if you find found one you like look elsewhere and look to one of some of the more expensive brands yeah and you might find that actually you'll find it getting it even cheaper than somewhere like yeah. top tiles okay someone said Tips for hiding. I feel like I'm talking to my <laughs> phone. I'm not talking to my phone. Uh, tips for hiding storing clutter. Yeah, storage. Yeah. <laughs> Lots Think, of storage. Thinking about it early, I think if you're mm. designing a room, like factor it in to your scheme. Yeah. Um, and Look, we really like drawers. using yeah drawers rather than cupboards. Much mm. better. A big chest of drawers. You know, you can pick up really inexpensively on auctions. I mean, obviously you're looking at brown furniture, but brown painted. Actually, you can get even modern things. Lots of people put like furniture that they in house clearances or furniture that they've bought really recently I found mm. something that was made really mm. recently and, and like a chest of drawers in a kitchen I have yeah. one and it has all my kids art stuff in the bottom just like shoved in mm. Tupperware tablecloths it's really good because you can put yes, them long in a chest of drawers, chest of drawers. Yeah. and I don't think anyone would think that yeah That's but good, it, yeah, it but softens not, the kitchen yeah, as well yeah. and actually not funny enough if you um, put a tablecloth over a table you can shove those of things yeah. underneath it yeah good yes yeah. Good like that yeah. um, someone said how do you incorporate smaller accent furniture that is aesthetically appealing yet functional um, um, in a sitting room or drawing room. Yeah, we little side, fun little side mm. tables, a really nice way to inject colour and interest mm. into a drawing room. And same with lamps, actually, as well. Yeah. Um, drinks trays, one of our like absolute favourites. Yeah, totally. Many rooms in houses should have a drinks tray, mm. um, and that can be you know a really fab like bright yellow lacquer or something like that that yeah. just adds a real like mm. pop of colour. Okay. Yeah. Um, can we talk about rugs? There've been quite a few questions that have come yeah. this week about rugs. Uh, rug sizes. For living rooms, rugs over rugs. Yeah. yeah. What are the rules when it so comes to rugs? So we go as big as you can. Yeah. As big as you can afford, because they, you know, and again, it's another item that mm. can be expensive. But as a rule, we'll try and make sure all furniture goes on the rug. Uh, so say in a drawing room you want to make sure sofa, side tables, everything is on. If you can't do that, probably everything off it, so yeah. just quite a small one in the middle of mm. your room. Um, but that only really works if it's layered on top of another rug. If you've got a huge room with a wooden floor and like a tiny little rug in the middle, it's going to look really rubbish. Just Almost better not to have it. Okay. And do you like layering rugs or is that an Instagram thing? Um, yeah, definitely. And actually, well, we will put it also on top of like a natural flooring or mm. something like that, you know, like a sizal yeah. or whatever. Quite often what we'll do, which is quite a good tip for people, is there are loads of um, companies online called things like, I don't know, online rugs or sizal yeah. online or something. Rugs.com. Rugs.com. And they have, um, you can design your own big sizal rug and choose the border colour that you want, so like a red or a grey or whatever. Mm. So we would say get one of those massive that covers your whole room and then buy what you can afford in terms of a decorative rug and put it on top of that. Mm. Oh, um, I and that's love a really that. good tip. Yeah, got um, oh, this is why we're doing <laughs> this. Amazing. Um, a question came in, how do you clean blinds properly? <laughs> Send them out yeah. to someone else. <laughs> right, okay. We have Hoover then. Yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, we have a curtain man, obviously, and he um, would get cross with us if we asked him to do something like that because yeah. they basically would have to take it apart entirely. You have you to know, take you have the to take rods and the strings and oh, everything out. Yeah. So hoover them. Mm. Curtains is easier, but there are loads of good companies that you can send them out to. Do you and use a specialist? Yeah. Because they will shrink. The okay. fabric shrinks. And okay. we would also say, just as a tip, don't do like a white blind or something because in London it'll just get grey sort of lines on it from all mm. the dirt and the dust in London. So choose a pattern fabric that's a bit more forgiving. Mm. Okay. Um, top tips on restyling white shelves. 
So it depends where they are, really. I think yeah. you... Lot, are, coloured books. glasses if it's in a kitchen. Yeah, totally. Um, books. You're a great one for colour coordination books. I love to colour coordinate books. books. That's what I do. Because <laughs> <laughs> it looks a bit like an art installation yeah, in it's itself. It's really nice. It's satisfying to um, the eye. And it actually then suddenly looks like a decorative element in the room mm. when you just sort of throw a it lot, looks a bit loads forgotten. of books on them. Yes. And fill shelf. your shelves. That's something. There's mm. nothing worse than a sort of sad looking half empty shelf. So just fill them with stuff. Yeah, yeah quite. Um, best shade of colour for floors and kitchens mm -hmm. that don't show the dirt? Um, well, I'd say lighter rather than lighter, darker. Yeah. Because if you're dropping, like, I don't know, flour and things like that, obviously if you've got a dark floor, white mm. stuff will show up. Um, mm. So probably something mid There's that real mid mix where people say, think, oh, I'm going to have a black floor because it won't um, show things up. It's actually worse mm. than, than yes. white floors. Yeah. I've really got a dark floor. floor. They're would, quite unforgiving. I would yeah. not rush yeah. into it again. So actually, actually, you can go, the other thing is wood floors. Yeah, we're real fans of wood or even... Dare we say it? Faux wood. Candine yeah. or in a something kitchen. like that. Candine, that's what yeah. I've got. It's amazing. Yes, yeah. I'm getting a few points. I used to have Candine. Yeah. Yeah. It, it is so, so practical. practical. It looks great. It looks really yeah. good. I think it's the best of all of those because some can look a bit shiny when they catch the light, but Candine's mm. really good. So yeah. we often will use that. Mine is worn yeah. so yeah. well. It was well, you know, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And they're good if you drop things on because it's quite actually a soft. Like forgiving you surface. don't need to worry if someone comes into your house um, with really, really high stilettos yes, or yeah. something like but that. But definitely something something with a bit of texture to it because that's forgiving yeah. for dirt. Okay. Good. Right. We haven't got too much time left, so mm -hmm. we're going to have. I'm going to try and get through these questions. <laughs> yeah. um, work tops that aren't too expensive in a kitchen? Um, we like a composite, like a yeah. quartz, but they are quite expensive. Are expensive. There's not really a cheap. Would you ever do wood? No. Yeah, I have wood. I would, but you need to be okay about Woods, the practicalities of it. But then you have to think about woods, you know. I'm this is a temporary kitchen so it's not forever but actually at least you can change it again mm. whereas for the same price as your stain yes. yeah. you yes. could have two, if you're really two like anal about cleaning and staining and whatever don't get it because no. it'll really stress you out but if you're okay with that then okay. wood's really lovely um, I like this simple touches to add to a rental to make it feel like yeah. a home yeah. I've rented a lot in London and it's really depressing <laughs> so artwork you just have to fill a few holes in the wall, but that's fine. Mm. And we were saying things, you know, buy furniture, invest in nice furniture because you'll take it with you to your next mm. place. So don't feel you have to kit it out from Ikea because it's rented. Yep. You know, buy some nice stuff. Mm. And accessorize. Um, and accessorize, you know, lovely, yeah. Buy yourself some lovely lampshades and some nice yes, lamps. I mean, look yeah. what you've done here. It's amazing. <laughs> you know, coffee table books and, okay. you know, look yeah. like home. Where do you start when you're planning a room? One hero piece or do you need a general concept first? general, general concept. concept um and that's a really okay. good question i mm. think or always start with like a holistic approach ideally to the whole house mm. but if you can't face that definitely to a room yeah. looking at all elements of it yeah um, what would be the best kitchen wall tiles to suit a sparkly black quartz kitchen worktop and floor tiles that's quite specific but i feel like yeah. we need to acknowledge it <laughs> um, I'd probably go, go plain, plain if you've got a sparkly mm. top. Okay. So mm. either a white or a grey, something like that, and a mm. simple, maybe a rectangle. Yeah. Um, what can you do to a bog standard flat with white walls and wooden floors to make it look chic? Yeah. Well, well, I think it's like the rental question. Yeah. The art, the accessories, dress rugs. It, yeah. Okay. Rugs, yeah. How do you introduce colour and pattern into an all white decor? That's from a colophobe. Yeah. yeah. Who obviously knows they need to get on board. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, I think slowly, softly, softly, yeah. like dip your toe in, get some cushions, get some accessories, get your confidence up, Use and then you can start adding more well. things in. You know, if you like pattern, like choose a, t a pattern with a lighter tone. Mm. A lot of these come in different colourways, but yeah. you know, this comes in a lovely, sort of really sort of pale, taupey. Yeah, sort you of can have a sort of cream on cream, you know, and yeah, it's still exactly. a pattern, but it doesn't have loads of colour. Yeah, use pattern and texture okay. and keep to lighter colours. Last question What sort of floor tiles if you have a navy kitchen, if you have navy kitchen units and brass fittings? Again, I think wood would wood, look really chic really, really with smart. that. Okay. Um, yeah. And I'm going to ask you, <laughs> what's your favourite thing to do to a house right now? Oh, God. I um, think painting it in an yeah, interesting colour or with a specialist finish, actually, like a gloss. Mm. We're really obsessed with lacquered yeah. rooms, like yeah. a lacquered loo or a bar area or something like that. Really glamorous. Really fun. Love it. Amazing. Well, sadly, that's all we've got time for. But God, there were so many takeaways. Yes. Thank you so much for Pleasure. joining Thanks us. Thanks for having us. Oh, we've talked for far too long, but it was too good <laughs> Sorry. to stop. Um, for more information on Salvis and Graham, head to their website, salvisandgraham.com. And... Do follow them on Instagram at Salvison Graham. I'm off on holiday next week. Lucky me. Well, Very sort of. I, it's in the UK and it's going <laughs> to rain, so maybe I'd rather be here. But Charlotte will be here with a shoe expert with a difference, and the team will be road testing their favourite prep lunches for summer. We'll see you then. Bye bye.